In 1994, Toronto police found the remains of a young woman inside a burning suitcase. Her identity remained unknown until last month. Well, it started with a phone call from a person with a conscience. The victim was 17-year-old Melanie Bindersing. In 1990, Melanie and her two brothers moved from Jamaica to Canada to live with their father and stepmother. Two years later, one of Melanie's brothers jumped to his death from a 22-story building. Then, Melanie was murdered. Her father and stepmother have now been arrested and charged with first-degree murder. Police also say they will re-examine the death of Melanie's brother, which was originally ruled a suicide. Joining me now is retired homicide detective Dave Perry. He's also the CEO of Investigative Solutions Network. And we were talking, Dave, a little bit about this and about the fact that this is a case that everyone remembers. Yeah, I think we all remember this one. It's, it's just such a unique and, and bizarre case to, to find a young woman burning in a suitcase who at that time and for many, many years was never identified. How often are cold cases like this, it's been so many years that have passed, how often is it that they are solved? Well, I think in the last 10 to 15 years, cold case investigations have really ramped up with, uh, you know, the newest and latest DNA technology. So that's and helped things. That's really helped things. Um, typically, um, homicide units and sex crimes units across North America have started cold case squads digging into old cases, looking for items that, you know, perhaps held DNA evidence that wasn't, uh, they weren't able to, uh, you know, use it prior to the, you know, some of the advanced technology that we have today. So there's a, there's a big change. A lot of cases are being solved. This one's a bit of a one-off. This is a case that went unsolved in many ways, including the identity of the victim. And to have it this many years later to have somebody uh, make a call to the police or at least come forward with the information to make the arrest, it's a, it's a bit unusual. Yeah, let's talk more about that because you're right. Didn't even know her identity. She was known as the girl in the suitcase. Exactly. Uh, so, so let's talk more about this person that tipped police off. Could they be held criminally responsible for holding that kind of information for this long? Typically not. In Canada, there's no law that says that somebody has to report a crime. The only, the only way that people get charged, if they're harboring somebody or, you know, they're an accomplice after the murder or something like that, they can be charged. But in a, in a case where somebody simply knows and they don't report, uh, generally speaking, there's nothing that, uh, they, that can be done in terms of charges. Uh, so Melanie came from Jamaica uh, to Canada with her brothers uh, to live with her father and stepmother. One of those brothers uh, jumped to his death. Right. And now that's been reopened. Right. And, and that's the exact step that should be taking. Um, quite often, suicides uh, are very hard to determine. It's a fine line, you know, whether they're a, an actual suicide or there's foul play or murder involved. Personally, as an investigator, I don't believe in coincidence. You know, when you have a, a girl who's been murdered and, and burned in a suitcase and we later find out that her brother committed suicide by jumping from a, a tall building, I'd want to have a close look at that case as well. Okay, thank you so much for coming in. My Sharing pleasure. your knowledge with us.